He says, if you have faith, even as a grain of mustard seed, the small, smallest of all, okay, you would say to this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. Now, did he just pray? Okay, here's the statement I'm going to make. Faith doesn't pray. It says. You get it? Now listen, I'm not saying don't pray. Right? Pray. Pray always. Pray without ceasing. Amen? I'm just saying, too often we think we, we have, that we're in faith when we pray. And, when, and if you're praying, sometimes you never say, you're just begging or asking, and you never say. But if you have faith, you will say now, what? It's not just saying either. Look how he said this. If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say it on the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up. That's a command. And he ain't talking to God. He's talking to the thing. Isn't that right? Be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea. Look at this. And that word should, again, I don't know why they use such weak words. Because the word literally means it will obey you. If you want, because you have faith. Faith gets what it came for. Faith never fails. You understand that? In other words, if it stops before, it didn't get it. It wasn't faith. So he says, now watch. Now he gives an example of this. He says in verse 7, but which of you, being a human, right? Which of you, having a servant, plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him, the servant, by and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down. To meet, go sit down and get ready to eat. He said, now notice, Jesus is talking about faith. And he said, which of you have it in his servant? So faith is a servant. Do you, do you see that? Faith is a servant. It serves you. Okay? Now, it's your faith in God, but it's, it serves you. And he says, which of you having faith... When it comes in from the field, in other words, you've had it out there, it's been working, and now it's accomplished, so now it has come back, you've disengaged, and now you've got faith, and you're ready to use it on something else. He says, which of you having this servant called faith, when it, whenever you get back, you're going to say, okay, here, uh, faith, just take a rest and sit down and relax, and, and, and I'll feed you. He says, that's not the way it works. Why? Because the master doesn't serve the servant. The servant serves the master. You get that? So he says, when your faith, when, if you have faith, you're going to say, and you're not going to sit down and tell, or tell your faith to sit down. You're going to tell your faith, hey, well, let's just read it. He says in verse 8, and will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup. Faith, feed me. Faith, I know you just come in from the field. You've been working. That's good. You accomplished that. Now feed me and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward you will eat and drink. In other words, faith, put off your benefit till later. You're going to serve me, and you're going to accomplish what I need done. Do you see that? Can, can we agree with that so far? Okay. Then he says, now watch this. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? No, you don't thank, you don't thank the servant for doing it. Why? Because the faith is the servant. It serves you, right? But now notice. Now, Jesus is going to make a change here, okay? He says, uh, does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? No, I think not. I, I don't think so. That's not the way it works. So likewise, you, when you shall have done all those things which are commanded you. So now he's putting you in the position of servant, right? Now, get this. When you have done all those things which were commanded you, so you have done all the commands, you got that? You've done them all. Say, we are unprofitable servants. Wait, I just did everything that I was told to do. How am I unprofitable? You want the answer? Because you had to be told. Watch. We have done that which was our duty to do. You think you're going to get a pat on the back for doing your duty? No, no, no. See, you get the pat on the back. We're going above and beyond the call of duty. See, this is where most Christians live, is the idea of, I'm doing everything I've been told, I, just, I don't want to mess up, and I'm doing, and most Christians haven't even done everything they've been told. 
Why? Because they're afraid they're going to mess up. And so they haven't even done that. But what is, so here, if you do, now get this, there are 1,070 commands in the New Testament. 1,070. All are wrapped up in love God, love your neighbor, do to them what you would have done to every one of them. You do that, you will obey, you will fulfill every command in the New Testament. And every command in the Old Testament too, actually. So there's 1,070 of them. Now think about this, because he says, when you've done them all, then you are to say, I'm unprofitable. I've only done that which was my duty. So it is our duty to do all of them, which means we're to do the two. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. Do to them what you want to have done. Amen? So hopefully the 1,070 didn't scare you too bad. All right? Because you can do it in two, which doesn't make it easy. Okay? But now notice he says, when you've done everything that you were commanded, all you've done is what is your duty. So if that's an unprofitable servant, how in the world can we become profitable? We have to do beyond what we were commanded. We have to do without being commanded. Why? Because whenever you love, you don't have to be commanded to do things. See, if you love and you see a person hungry, you feed them. You don't, God, do you want me to feed them? God will say, what do you think? Right? What makes you think about feeding them? See, if that, that part of you that makes you think about feeding them is the part of me that's in you, and you already know what you're supposed to do, and you're waiting to hear a word from me that takes that responsibility off of you, and I'm not going to take that resp- responsibility off of you. I'm going to tell you, go above and beyond. Does this make sense? Whenever I first started really studying and doing some things, and these, this scripture dictated how I saw things. This dictated. Because I, I looked at that and I said, okay, so if I do everything God commands me, I'm still unprofitable. So that means I have to do what's not commanded. I have to go beyond the command. I have to do it without being commanded. See, see there's this whole thing. See, when you're in the military, your commanding officer, if he's a good officer, you know, and he, and he wants good working conditions, okay, he doesn't walk in and go, Soldier, do this. I want this done. Get it done now. I don't mean maybe. That sounds kind of like Summerall, but it's because he was a good soldier. But anyway, but he wouldn't come in and command. See, that, that, that's not necessarily a good leader. Why? Because all that does is build animosity. He bosses me around, tell me when, tell me when. Acts like I don't see those stars on his shoulder. I see those stars on his shoulder. And all he does is build that up, right? So a good leader comes in and says, you know what? You know what we need to do? We need to do this. We, we need this. We need this to happen. And then he watches and sees who does it. Why? Because they weren't commanded. But see, there's this thing in the mind of good soldiers that you probably heard before, and, it, and it, it goes like this. Your wish is my command. That's the heart of love. Your wish is my command. 